From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Members of Congress went back to Washington this week to continue their lame duck or rump session following the November election. It's been another bizarre week in Washington, as well as the current occupant of the White House. President Donald Trump continues his still unsuccessful efforts to prove massive voter fraud and overturn the election. Two weeks ago on Inside Politics, but we hosted Nashville Democratic Congressman Jim Cooper to discuss what he thinks lawmakers can get done between now and the end of the year, and what lies ahead in the new Congress and in the new presidential administration of President-elect Joe Biden beginning in January. Today we welcome Republican Congressman John Rose of the 6th Congressional District to discuss these same matters on, from his perspective. Congressman, welcome back to the program and thank you for joining us on the show. Hello, Pat. Thank you for having me on the show today. It's a privilege to be here. It's been uh, over a month now since presidential election day. Uh, more than 30 states, including here in Tennessee, have certified their statewide votes. Despite numerous charges, lawsuits, and recounts, President Trump has not been able to prove large-scale voter fraud, nor has it changed the outcome in any state. How much longer do you think President Trump ought to continue to push this particular effort, which seems to cloud his legacy and some say makes him look like he's acting like a sore loser? Sure. Well, I think the answer to that is that elections have to accomplish two very important purposes, and they have to accomplish those purposes simultaneously. So we have to produce an outcome, a winner, in this case, the President of the United States. But we also have to produce that winner in a manner and a means that makes it possible for the loser, and maybe more importantly, the supporters of the loser, to feel confident and, and see integrity in that outcome and accept that outcome. And so I think uh, unfortunately, due to a, a raft of late changes to the rules of elections across the country in various states, many of those being the battleground states that we're looking at and have our focus today, uh, unfortunately, uh, those timetables for getting to an answer have been delayed intentionally in, in most cases to allow for uh, uh, trying to maximize the voter turnout. And so, uh, so I think we have to allow that process to play itself out. Well, Congressman, and, uh, it's been, it's been, I think it's not unreasonable then to continue to make sure that we get to that outcome and hopefully, ultimately, whichever side is, is judged to be the loser, they'll be willing to accept that outcome. Congressman, this has been in several courts in several states. The president has won few, if any, of the lawsuits involved. Uh, where are you personally? Are you ready to say there'll be a new administration in Washington in January? Are you ready to say that Joe Biden won the election and he is president-elect? I don't think it's, I think it's premature to say that. You know, we, I, I've spent my career in the private sector in business, and we have kind of a saying in business when it comes to judging how we allocate our resources that we can have things be either uh, uh, quick, fast, um, or cheap. Quick, fast, or cheap. Pick two. You may have heard this, this construct. Uh, and, and the reason you have to pick two is because, you, you know, the, there's an internal inconsistency between achieving all three of those at the same time. In politics, I would say there's a kind of, t uh, I see a similar construct, which is that we have to have, uh, and historically in this country, we've placed a great emphasis on the trustworthiness of the outcome. But there also are values of a timely outcome, uh, and there's a value of maximizing turnout. So trustworthiness, timeliness, and the turnout. Uh, again, historically in this country, we've put a real emphasis on the trustworthiness of the outcome, and I think appropriately so, as we discussed in that previous question. Um, unfortunately, this year we had a number of states adopt very permissive rules with which they have no familiarity in terms of administering those rules to try to uh, increase the turnout. Um, when you when you go too far down any of these values uh, pushing for them uh, for the extreme you make it harder to achieve the others so we've seen the timeliness of the reaching a decision we've seen that delayed uh, as we know in the presidential election we have a constitutional calendar for the determination of our president and and so we find ourselves in a conundrum where we have sacrificed the timeliness of the election in order to uh, arguably to increase the turnout 
and we may sadly i fear have reduced the trustworthiness of the outcome uh, congressman uh, back in early november you and several other congressmen asked uh, attorney general uh, william barr to look into the invest to investigate the uh, election he's now come back and told the associated press he's not found any signs of massive voter fraud nothing that would change the outcome of the election are you satisfied with what you've heard from General, from General Barr, or do you think he needs to do more investigation? Should he be fired by President Trump? The president's not happy with, his, with, with those statements he made. Well, I, along, as you mentioned, I, along with a number of my colleagues, did send uh, a, actually a couple of letters to the Attorney General asking for the Attorney General to bring to bear the resources of the Justice Department to investigate the many allegations, the many questions around uh, surrounding this election. And thankfully, the Attorney General uh, fairly promptly answered us back and agreed that the Attorney General, uh, that the Justice Department would pursue an investigation. But I think your question raises another element of our elections that I think is worthy of, uh, has been brought really, frankly, I would say into focus by this election, and that is as you know, Pat, in, in our country, uh, in the justice system, on the civil side, the plaintiff has the burden of proof. And on the criminal side, the state has the burden of proof to prove uh, the guilt of, a, of an accused citizen by, uh, by a very high standard beyond a reasonable doubt. On the civil side, it's by, usually by a preponderance of the evidence. Unfortunately, historically, we've viewed election challenges in this country in the same way. I think this election exposes that that may not be the appropriate standard here. So many people, I hear many people saying, well, the president hasn't proven uh, systemic widespread fraud that would overturn the election. I would argue that uh, while certainly it's the prerogative of a losing candidate to go ferret out that kind of evidence and prove it, um, I think the people have an interest here. And so that's why we appealed to the Justice Department to weigh in. I think that uh, they've yet to show that they've done the kind of thorough, deep investigation that I think is called for here. I don't think that they should just be looking for issues that are brought to them uh, kind of nicely packaged up. They should be out searching and really digging into this question. And again, as I mentioned before, the problem is the constitutional calendar that we've historically adopted, which kind of favors a very timely outcome, uh, may be at odds with really getting to the bottom of the questions. And so we've seen a number of facts, a, a number of issues alleged. Probably the one that at least I find most disconcerting are the statistical anomalies that surround this election, where we see uh, questions uh, surrounding um, for example, in Pennsylvania, historically, the number of, of uh, absentee or mail-in ballot, ballots that are rejected is in the 1% to 3% range. In this election right now, it's 0.038%. Uh, that doesn't really make sense. It may point simply to the very permissive rules that have been implemented, but what it tells us is that we may have ballots being accepted and counted uh, as legal that are actually not legal votes. And so these questions exist across the, really across the spectrum. And I think that um, this election has exposed that we really need to dig in and get to the bottom of them. And it's very important because we are choosing the leader of the free world. Congressman John Rose of Tennessee's 6th Congressional District is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with him after this break.